Welcome to Global Marketing, Chapter 2, The Global Economic Environment. In this chapter, we will be covering the overview of world economy. We will take a survey of the economic system types, the stages of market development, and the balance of payments. Fifty years ago, the auto industry was very different. European automakers like Renault, Citroen, Volvo, and others produced vehicles radically different from those of American makers like Ford, or even Japanese autos made by Toyota or Nissan. Today, manufacturers make automobiles for home markets but are increasingly global companies with global products. The World Economy and Overview – The New Realities the first change is the increased volume of capital movements. The dollar value of world trade in merchandise is increasing at roughly $11 trillion per year. However, the London foreign exchange market turns over $450 billion each working day. Overall, foreign exchange transactions are running at approximately $1.5 trillion per day worldwide far surpassing the dollar volume of the world trade in goods and services. The second change is the relationship between manufacturing and productivity. Manufacturing is not in decline, but employment in manufacturing is declining due to gains in productivity. In 1971, 26% of the U.S. workers were employed at manufacturing, 13% in 2001. The third change is the emergence of world economy as the dominant economic unit. The real secret of economic success of Japan and Germany is that business leaders and policy makers focus on their country's competitive position in world markets. This change has brought two questions to the front. How does the global economy work? And who is in charge? Unfortunately, the answers to these questions are not clear-cut. The fourth change is the end of Cold War. The demise of communism as an economic and political system can be explained in a straightforward manner. Communism is not an effective economic system. The overwhelmingly superior performance of world's market economies has given leaders in socialist countries little choice but to renounce their ideology and introduce democratic reforms. The fifth change relates to e-commerce. The PC and the internet have, in some ways, diminished the importance of national boundaries. Two-thirds of American households have PCs. There are 600 million computers used worldwide. In the so-called information age, barriers of time and place have been subverted by a transnational cyber world that functions 24-7. Amazon.com, eBay, Google, MySpace, and YouTube are examples of companies in this era. The government economic policy can be divided into two further policies, the monetary policy and the fiscal policy. The monetary policy deals with interest rates and the supply of money. The fiscal policy deals with tax and the spendings of the government. Economic systems. An economic system is dependent on resource allocation and resource ownership. There are two kinds of ways in which resources are allocated in an economic system. Number one, through market demand, or number two, through command and control of the government. Similarly, there are two kinds of ways resources are owned in an economic system. Number one, privately, that is by individual citizens, or number two, they are owned by the state. In market capitalism, the resources are allocated by considering the market demand and they are owned privately by individuals. The opposite of market capitalism is centrally planned socialism. In centrally planned socialism, the resources are allocated by the government or the political party in power, while the resources are owned by the state. In centrally planned capitalism, the resources are allocated by the government, while resources are owned privately. In market socialism, the resources are allocated by considering the market demand, while resources are owned by the state. Market Capitalism Market capitalism is practiced around the world, most notably in Western Europe and North America. All market-oriented economies do not function in an identical manner. The US is characterized by its competitive, free-for-all and decentralized initiative. Japan is sometimes called Japan Inc. or Japan Incorporated because it is tightly run, highly regulated economic system that is also market-oriented. In market capitalism, individuals and firms allocate resources. 
production resources are privately owned and driven by consumer needs. Government's role is to promote competition among firms and ensure consumer protection. Centrally planned socialism. Marxism is a vanquished economic system. For decades, China and the former Soviet Union and India used this economic system. All these countries now have economic reforms that have some degree of market allocation and private ownership. It is the opposite of market capitalism. State holds broad powers to serve the public interest. It decides what goods and services are produced and at what quantities. Consumers can spend only what is available. Government owns entire industries and controls distribution. Demand typically exceeds supply. There is little reliance on product differentiation, advertising, and pricing strategy. China, India, and the former USSR now are moving towards some economic freedom. Centrally planned capitalism. In Sweden, where two-thirds of all expenditures are controlled by the government, resource allocation is more command-oriented than market-oriented. Sweden's welfare state has a hybrid system that has elements of both centrally planned socialism and capitalism. China's Guangdong province operates within a market system. China's private sector accounts for 75% of total national output. Cuba and North Korea are the last countries to use command allocation approach. Centrally planned capitalism is the economic system in which command resource allocation is used extensively in an environment of private resource ownership. Market Socialism Market socialism, also called liberal socialism, is the economic system representing a compromise between socialist planning and free enterprise in which enterprises are publicly owned but production and consumption are guided by market forces rather than government planning. Economic Freedom There is a high correlation between the degree of economic freedom and the extent to which a nation's mixed economy is heavily market-oriented. The ranking's validity has been criticized. However, it provides us with some guidance on how the world economies are performing. The variables of economic freedom include trade policy, taxation, capital flow and foreign investment, banking policy, wages and price controls, property rights, and black market. Stages of Market Development The World Bank has defined various categories of development using gross national income as a basis. BEMS, identified 10 years ago, were countries in Central Europe, Latin America, and Asia that were to have rapid economic growth. Today, the focus is on BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. BRICS nations are expected to be key players in global trade even as their track record on human rights, environmental protection, and other issues are scrutinized by their trading partners. The BRICS government leaders will also come under pressure at home as their developing market economies create greater economic and income disparity or inequality. Although the income definition of each of these stages is arbitrary, countries within a given category generally have a number of characteristics in common. Thus, the stages provide a useful basis for the global market segmentation and target marketing. Low-income countries. It includes 40% of the world's population. Low-income countries represent limited markets for products with some exceptions. For example, the Bangladeshi garment industry shipped $9 billion in goods in 2007. Some low-income countries have such serious economic, social, and political problems that they represent extremely limited opportunities. Kenya, Rwanda are examples. Russian states represent an interesting situation. Income is declining and their economic hardship is increasing. These countries represent risk-reward trade-offs. India's move from centrally planned economy to a free economic system resulted in a jump in foreign exchange reserves. Some of the characteristics of low-income countries are limited industrialization, high percentage of population in farming, high birth rates, low literacy rates, heavy reliance on foreign aid, political instability and unrest, and most of these countries are concentrated in sub-Saharan Africa. Low middle income countries. Some of the characteristics of these countries are rapidly expanding consumer markets, cheap labor, 
mature standardized labor intensive industries like textile and toys the brick nation that belongs to low middle income is china upper middle income countries the characteristics of upper middle income countries are rapidly industrializing less agricultural employment increasing urbanization rising wages high literacy rate and advanced education low wage costs than advanced countries also they are referred to as newly industrialized economies or nies the examples of upper middle income countries include brazil russia malaysia chile venezuela marketing opportunities and ldcs ldcs or least developed countries are characterized by a shortage of goods and services in these countries long term opportunities must be nurtured the corporate sector in these countries need to look beyond per capita gnp the businesses need to consider the ldcs collectively rather than individually they need to consider the first mover advantage and set realistic deadlines mistaken assumptions about ldcs in the aggregate the buying power of poor communities can be substantial in rural bangladesh villagers spend considerable sums to use village phones operated by local entrepreneurs poor customers buy tvs and gas stoves to improve their lives poor people often pay higher prices there is an opportunity for efficient competitors to realize attractive margins by offering quality and low prices rural residents can and do learn to use cell phones pcs and other devices informal economies in many poor countries are highly exploitative a global company can improve a country's standard of living while earning a reasonable roi some common mistaken assumptions about ldcs are the poor have no money the poor will not waste money on non essential goods entering developing markets is fruitless because goods there are too cheap to make a profit people in bottom of the pyramid countries or bop countries cannot use technology global companies doing business in bop countries will be seen as exploiting the poor these are all wrong and mistaken assumptions high income countries product and market opportunities in a post industrial society is more heavily dependent upon new products and innovation than in industrial societies ownership levels of basic products is extremely high in most households when it is difficult to expand market share companies must bring new products to market or create new markets for products some of the characteristics of high income countries are sustained economic growth through disciplined innovation service sector is more than 50% of the gni importance of information processing and exchange ascendancy of knowledge over capital intellectual over machine technology scientists and professionals over engineers and semi skilled workers future orientation importance of interpersonal relationships g8 the group of 8 the goal of g8 is economic stability and prosperity these eight countries are the us japan germany france britain canada italy and russia the organization for economic cooperation and development oecd this includes 30 nations its origin is in post world war 2 europe but now canada japan are also a part of this group it promotes economic growth and social well-being it focuses on world trade global issues labor market deregulation anti bribery conventions etc the triad this includes the us western europe and japan it represents 75% of the world income the expanded triad includes all the north america and the pacific rim and most of the eastern europe as well global companies are usually equally strong in each part product saturation levels the stages of economic development can serve as a guide to marketers in evaluating product saturation levels in low per capita income countries these levels are likely to be low balance of payments balance of payments is defined as the record of all economic transactions between the residents of a country and the rest of the world current account refers to the record of all recurring trade 
in merchandise and service and humanitarian aid. Trade deficit represents the negative current account. Trade surplus represents positive current account. The capital account refers to the record of all long-term direct investment, portfolio investment and capital flows. This marks the end of chapter number 2. Thank you very much.